and I got to follow that. <laughs> ah. And uh, f- favorite, favorite line, oink, oink, right? <laughs> if you did not know the cat and the pig at the manger scene. Yeah. <laughs> uh, pretty special, pretty special uh, when we think back of all that God has done in Luke and, and what has transpired over the past two and a half years. Uh, in our life, in our journey through, through his life, we saw this incredible entrance of the king. We, we saw this spectacular king born in a manger. That, that was so counterintuitive to how a king would enter the world. And yet, the bold proclamation in, in the humblest of ways. And then we saw his teaching. We, we saw the king teach in ways, do miraculous things, calm storms, heal the sick and the blind. And then we got to celebrate this past Easter, the victory of the king, that, that Jesus was nailed to a cross and died a criminal's death and yet was raised to life victorious. We celebrate the victory of the king And Luke ended his story this way. He led them out of Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. But was the story over? What's one of your favorite sequels? Is there a sequel that you think of? Is there like one that immediately erupts to your mind? What, what's a favorite sequel of yours? Hey, I'm David. I'm one of the pastors here. It's nice to meet you guys. Neil is, is, is like he's seeing his favorite show up there, Star Wars. Was, was the one, two, and three as good as four, five, and six? Seven, eight, nine. That's good. Nope, nope. The original, an originalist. Uh, what's another great sequel in our movie cinema history? Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. Thank you, CJ. That almost made it, made the cut. So I think of The Incredibles. That was like 20 years in the waiting, right? To see The Incredibles. Indiana Jones. Anybody? Anybody? The, uh, no. And then I, I, don't, I actually haven't seen it, but... When I looked up great sequels, Superman 2 came up. Is that a throwback for anybody? A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Luke says the story is not done. We're going to continue in Acts for the next four weeks. Acts 1, we're going to look at the Holy Spirit next week at Pentecost. We'll look at Peter's sermon. And then we're going to look at what 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 the early church devoted themselves to. But here is where Luke starts his second volume to the same guy. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up. And after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive after his suffering by many proofs. You guys remember what one of those proofs were? Eating fish. I just think that's phenomenal. (laughs) Appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said these things, they were looking on and he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven, as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes. And he said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This morning, we get to see a peek into volume two. Luke starts his second book by highlighting the power of Jesus' ascension, which continues through the witness empowered by his spirit. 
we get to see the power of Jesus' ascension continuing through the witnessing empowerment by his spirit. So pray with me, and we will, uh, we will jump into the text this morning. Jesus, you are so good. Thank you for, for our kids. Thank you for the life that we get to see in them and the joy of what it means to be a multi-generational community. Uh, reveal yourself this morning. We long to hear from you through your word. And so as we uh, get a peek into Acts over these next four weeks, help us see how this story is continuing. Thank you, Jesus. Always for your glory, we pray. Amen. Amen. So here's our outline for the morning. We're going to remember the promise. Remember the mission and then trust the process. And so there's some slight discrepancies between Luke's ascension account in Luke 24 and Luke 1. Some people might go, huh, can we trust it? Luke is the only one who gives us an ascension account. And so the dating, when you read Luke 24, it could appear as if this is happening on Easter Sunday. But in Acts 1, he tells us there were 40 days between that time. We see a few details that are different, not different, just not included in each account. In Luke, Christ raises his hands and blesses them. In Acts, we see him ascending through the clouds and two angels appear. The place is stated as near Bethany. And in Acts, we see from the Mount of Olives. And so that could lead us to go, what's going on here? Are these different accounts? How how is Luke telling the story? But if we, as good readers, just understand sometimes when you're making a point, you include certain details differently. And so both in Luke and Acts, we see Jesus commissioning his disciples and then ascending. And both talk about him being taken up into heaven And we see the disciples return to Jerusalem and wait for the Spirit to come as he commanded. And geographically, both have a reference to outside and east of Jerusalem and referencing near or on somewhere on the Mount of Olives. And what he says in the Ascension account, he talks about the promise. And so, do you ever watch a show and you get like the the highlight reel, like previously on? Does that ever happen? What's a show you watch where you see like previously on? What would that be? Soap operas. Soap operas. Oh, who's watching soap operas? Well done. Well done, Cole. <laughs> soap operas. What else? What else do you see like previously on? What is it? Next level chef. Next level chef. Come on. Thank you. That's a great one. Are you guys sucked into like chef shows as well? Oh, our family is just sucked in. So, so Luke does the same thing. As he opens, in the first book of Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began. What should that lead us to understand about what's about to happen? The story of Jesus continues. This isn't different than what we just heard in Luke. Jesus and his impact continues in Acts. Oh, Theophilus, I've dealt with all that Jesus began, and and what are the things that he says and highlights from what he shared previously on? He captures it in two words. He says, all that Jesus did and taught. And so, I don't know about you, so when you combine two things, what happens in your mind? Because he's combining Jesus' words and works. Previously in Luke, all that Jesus began to do and teach. What do you think of? So when I'm in Stoughton, there's a, a, a combination of smells when you enter a certain restaurant. And, and I'm like, I'm not sure if I want like chicken right now or if I want tacos. You know what I mean? Like I, I walk into that store. I'm like, I'm just, I'm just overwhelmed with like this, like, I'm, it's, what do I do? Is, it, is that what Luke is trying to tell us? No. John Calvin says this. He says, it is like two shoelaces being tied together beautifully. Jesus' words and works, all that he did and taught is continuing. That's what Luke is trying to tell us. And so what should we know that his followers would want to remember? He gives us three things here in the first few verses. Until the day when he was taken up, he had given commandments through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, that that he wants to remember these commandments that were given. 
Dylan, thanks for smirking over there. Dylan's still sit, lingering in the Taco Bell KFC illustration, just sitting there. <laughs> Commandments. The second one, he says, he presented himself alive to them after suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days. The risen Savior. What, what does he want his followers to know that he has risen and he proves that? See my hands, see my feet, bring me some fish. And then, what does he say? He says, the third, telling them about the kingdom of God, that the kingdom is already, not yet, that Jesus has ushered in and is reigning, and what he began is going to continue. And so, as the kingdom advances, as Jesus is currently reigning, we get to remember these three realities, that I am saved from my sins, that Jesus conquered death, and that is a reality that I can remember and simultaneously remember that he isn't fully reigning yet. He is continuing and he promises to come back someday. And so I am being saved from my sins. But there is coming a day that Jesus is commissioning his disciples. I, I will be saved from my sins. And so he says, remember the promise. And then he gives them a call to remember the mission for what he is sending them to. Pick it up again at verse 3. He presented himself alive to them during his sufferings by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days, speaking about the kingdom of God. And we're going to put a pin in this. Next week, we're going to deal with this. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So the question I asked was, those disciples, were they already indwelt with the Spirit or not? Had they already been baptized with the Spirit or not? We're going to deal with that next week. But sometimes, just to sit in this, were they, were they sitting trembling in fear, waiting for the Spirit to arrive? Doesn't appear so from Luke 24 when he says, and they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. So next week, a little teaser, next week we're going to deal with what exactly is happening. And I'm going to share my conviction and we can wrestle with it. I'm sure there's going to be many in the room of different persuasions. But I want to share at least how I'm understanding Acts 1 and Pentecost. But a little teaser, we'll deal with that next week. But he gives them a mission. He gives them this mission. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at, at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? So, so picture with me. This is what I'm picturing. He, he's like, hey, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give the Holy Spirit. There's going to be this power. It's going to be incredible. Like, guys, I'm back from the dead. I've, I've been walking around. And then what do they do? Hey, so is, is this the time you're going to return, from, from, uh, return, uh, return and restore the kingdom of Israel? What, what face do you picture Jesus making in that moment? And how quickly do you see the next details go forward? So he then says this, It's not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father is fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. And he gives a very clear strategy. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. There's a beautiful, a beautiful mission contained in Acts 1.8. This is, this is one of our anchor points for our all nations. Where we talk about Jerusalem, Judea, and the ends of the earth. We are not just beneficiaries of what God has done. But he is now saying you play a key role in this journey. And so for us around here, the way that gets expressed for us when we talk about Jerusalem. For us, that's every one of us. We have an everyday missionary fund where we hope people are asking for resources to invest in their neighborhoods. We pray and we watch for God's work all around us. Uh, next week, we're going to start our CareNet baby bottle fund. We invest in CareNet, a local pro-life organization that longs to meet men and women in a place of need and trying to support them. And so that happens every Mother's Day to Father's Day. Our legacy fund is an adoption fund that we invest in families who are maybe seeking adoption. Uh, we work with uh, uh, a family in inner city Minneapolis, and we have one of our campus guys up in Oshkosh, Davis Christensen. When we talk about the ends of the earth, that next layer beyond uh, our region, 
It is thrilling to know we have partners in Turkey and Honduras, Poland, and Ukraine. You just got to hear from one of our people last Sunday that's headed to Southeast Asia, and one of our young men, again, another campus partner in New Zealand, from Jerusalem, Judea, and the ends of the earth. We, as a local church, believe in Acts 1-8 and its passion for seeing the gospel proclaimed. And then, how fast does Jesus say that's happening? (laughs) I could imagine they might have been a little overwhelmed when he said, you're going to the world, but we trust the process. We remember the promise, we remember the mission, and then we trust the process. Here's what he says. So he says, wait for the promise of my father. So again, this is where my mind goes when I hear this. He says, wait for the promise. So you're going to get this power. He's, he's, He's pumped. He is absolutely pumped. He's like, guys, this is what we're going to go do. And then what do they ask him? They ask him, so is this the time you're going to restore the kingdom of Israel? What do you think Jesus did in that moment? <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. He got, he's like, all right. And, and it feels like now this happens almost like real quickly, right? So slightly different purpose in Acts than Luke. He's just sitting here going, you got to be kidding me. And so he's like, I'm building for this moment. This is the time. And then... And then this happens. He says, all right, you're going to be my witnesses. This is what's going to happen. This is where you're going to go. And when he had said these things, they were looking on, and he was lifted up, and a cloud took them out of their sight. What does it say they were doing? And while they were gazing into heaven. So can I get a kid to come join me on stage real quick? So you never know. You're like, what's going to come out of there? You're like, what's coming out of the side room? <laughs> One of the courts boys, oh, you were beat. So good. But you're raising your hand so politely and so graciously, though. So you got any words for us? Any encouragement? Do you know, so are you guys familiar with, like, dance dads, dance moms? I'm starting to get into that world right now. Um, we have a dance dad and dance mom right there. So can you just help me by... by we're just going to take this balloon. We're going to pretend there's not a massive string on it so second service can still have the same experience. So, and when they had said these things, so you're going to, you're going to, you got it, Kenna? All right. And he said these things, and as they were looking on, he lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And so I just assume this, this feels like what's happening. Now, this is, this is the David version, right? So obviously calibrate, but the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. I said, guys, this is the time. We are going forward. So are you restoring Israel? He's like, forget this. I am out. So if you release that, the, the balloon, and they, they, oh, just keep going. Just let it go. Just let it go. And they just... They just, they just gazed into heaven. Give them a kind of hand. Nice job. Nice job. So, so he, he's, he's on like the pinnacle. This is it. He's giving them their big commission. And what's their words? So, so are you going to fix our circumstances now? And while they were gazing into heaven... Behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you in heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go. Feels like sometimes, I don't know about you, waiting is hard. (laughs) It's, It's not something I enjoy doing a ton of. Thought of a few things that sometimes we wait for. The Beltline traffic. Maybe getting off of a Delta airplane and you just are frantically, when that seatbelt sign unbuckles, you are ready to go. Waiting maybe for Brooklyn Elementary to finish, if you ever do pick up for your kids. Maybe you're engaged in waiting to be married. We see these disciples who, who walked with Jesus for two and a half years, or three years, and, and, and then they see him go into heaven, 
And it was like they were just stuck in this gaze. <laughs> they, they, they were just stuck waiting, unsure exactly what the next move might be. And sometimes I can't help but sometimes feel that in my own life. We've been waiting 2,000 years for Jesus to return, and, and sometimes maybe we too get stuck in this gaze. And yet... The angels turn and say, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go. Essentially, I think he's saying, fellas, it's game time. It's it's time to play. A few weeks ago, Brandon Quartz and I got invited to, you guys ever heard of Easter Seals? Does that mean anything to anybody? So, so they do this, uh, this incredible fundraiser every year, uh, golf tournaments, and then they do a celebrity basketball tournament. And, uh, and so there was Wisconsin Badger football alumni. Uh, one of them played for the Giants. He was, uh, he was on their Super Bowl team a few years ago. Uh, another guy uh, from the Badgers basketball, uh, Mike Wilkinson, if that name means anything. He was Mr. Wisconsin basketball like 30 years ago, 20 years ago, played in Europe. And then there was Brandon and me. And so, but we had a great time. Casey said, every time I touched the ball, I could not get rid of that thing quick enough. But somehow Brandon got invited and the person he chose to include was me. But what it felt like when there's another level, it just feels like it's game time where where it's time to play. But sometimes we get stuck in the gaze. We remember the promise, we remember the mission, and we trust the process. Because Monday is coming. (laughs) Our week is here. And so as we we look into these first few chapters of Acts, I I hope here is the question that we are feeling. Uh, Are we gazing or, or is it game time? Do we sometimes, say that again? It's game time, you heard it, I heard it. And we collectively are becoming a healthy hub. We give spirit-empowered witness to Christ. In a few weeks, next week, we're going to read Pentecost and who was there. I just want to give a small teaser about who was there. Because this, this is where we're heading. In other words, dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews devout from men from every nation under heaven at the sound of the multitude came together. They were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. Parthians and Medes and Elamites, both Jews and proselytes, proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. And we hear them tell in their own tongues the mighty works of God. And then 3,000 souls were saved, some of whom were from where? Crete. This summer, we are going to lean into those lives who traveled to Jerusalem, traveled back to Crete, and then were encouraged by Titus as they were planting churches on Crete. Crete was this notorious place known for some pretty evil things. Madison is the 11th most unchurched or dechurched city in the country. Titus speaks into that culture and says, Jesus shines bright. This summer, we're going to have a variety of guest speakers coming to join us. This summer, here's a little teaser. Annual meeting, May 19th, we'll have a fuller packet. Come and join us and encourage us, Hillcrest family, by what God is doing in and through us. And we're going to get to hear from them, encourage us through Titus. Is game time or are we gazing? And we are becoming this healthy hub, much like Paul and Titus were doing in Crete. We get to participate in that here. That mission from Acts that started is still continuing. And our mission is in all the alls, if you'll allow that. What is our mission? It is in all these areas of life. Racial, sexual, mental, physical, political, financial, relational. Don't hear me diminish other layers of investment. But hear me say the root and the fundamental issue is what? Jesus is spiritual. And so we get to remember the promise, remember the mission, and trust the process in all of these spiritual issues. How? 
individually listening and telling many gospel stories. So I want to invite the worship team up. We listen and tell these many gospel stories. The same story that started in Acts 1, that Jesus began and continues. We ask about people's heart, their history, their hopes, and their hurts. We get to know what God is up to in someone's life in order to then be a witness, to actually witness this gospel story of creation, fall, cross, and the new creation that Jesus really is who he said he is and is rescuing us from our sins to spend eternity with him. Pray with me as we continue in worship. Jesus, you are so good. You are the ascended king. And we celebrate all that you did and taught and began that continues to this day. Help us to continue to join with you on what you are up to in people's lives all around us, always for your glory.